Hello, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel and for the past month or so I've been working with this line of brushes. This is the Citadel color line and I tried out where I could use them, where I couldn't use them. I determined whether I could clean them to be white again and so on and I'm going to go through each of the variety of brushes and tell you what I found in my research for this past month. <laughs> If you are one who cannot handle your white brushes becoming stained pastel, then these brushes are not for you. I have used a variety of different brush soaps, brush cleaners, airbrush cleaners, dish soaps, shampoos, but none of them have completely cleaned out uh, your paintbrush to the point that it's not stained. So expect some staining for these brushes, notably. Water is not going to cut it for these brushes. You definitely need some sort of brush cleaner of some kind and I prefer the ones that create a froth when you're cleaning it. Um, my favorite are the brush soaps themselves like the Masters brush soap and the uh, Broken Toad brush soap that uh, I used regularly while I was making the video and testing out these brushes. If you're interested in my top three brushes of the line, make certain to stay to the very end. This shade medium brush I found fairly versatile. Using it with liquid paints like this contrast paint proved easy because it holds a moderate amount of paint at a time. Personally, I prefer a brush that can hold even more paint at the one time and comes to a finer point than this one does. But for new miniature painters, this style of brush might be better since it restricts the amount of liquid paint on your brush at the one time, making it easier to control your paint flow until you're more used to it. For someone very familiar with using liquid paints, however, I would use this only for shading or basing or contrast painting over an entire model or entire section where it doesn't particularly matter if you splash over or not or maybe for wet blending semi-large areas that don't require precision. Will I be using this particular brush to replace the brushes I already use for contrast paint washes and inks? Uh, for the most part, I would not. But I'm still trying it. It's, it's in its early stages. This shade large brush I found similar to the medium with respect to how restricted it was at holding a lot of paint at the one time. I have found myself going back to pick up more paint a lot. But again, for someone who hasn't dealt with liquid paints a lot, like contrast paints and washes and inks and glazes and so on, using a paintbrush that has a small amount of paint in the bristles may be the way to go until you are able to control a larger amount. I also found this brush resistant to leaving paint streaks, which is always nice because of its super fine bristles, allowing for smooth coverage of a single color over a larger surface area. It too would not be good for more precise work, clearly, which the base paintbrushes of this line could handle. But for a bigger paintbrush of shades and basing on larger surface areas like terrain and tanks, I would consider using it often. As you can see, due to its super fine bristles, it can make a decent terrain dry brush as well. I will be keeping it for further testing. I would use it again, focusing on liquid paints to cover large surface areas, or as a secondary or tertiary dry brush, since I do like to use multiple dry brushes during one dry brushing project. This brush I have actually really come to like. It is wide and thin, thinner further at its tip, uh, rather than rounded, and it allows you to cover a section of a model well without spilling over to any other section. Uh, as long as you're using a fairly liquid paint. It wouldn't be good for tiny objects, but for clothing or armor or armor sections, or covering a semi-large area in a small amount of time, I found it useful. And I will keep this one in my stack of brushes. It's ability, medium, base, suits its name. The base small brush is a fairly good detail brush. 
It doesn't get the nitty gritty details, but its round point allows you to color in a section of a model without spilling over, and its fine bristles hold enough paint that you could even wet blend if you wanted to, as I'm doing with two contrast paints here, just for the fun of it. As I said, you can pick out details, though I would definitely switch to another brush for the finer details, eyes and claws and buttons and so on. But it can layer over reasonably sized areas, and it can base a model of this hero's size at a very reasonable pace without you having to switch to a smaller or larger brush, as long as you follow the slow and steady wins the paint job method. It isn't my favorite, because its tip could be a little tighter for my liking, its base could be a little broader for more paint holding opportunities, but it'll do its job without fuss, and I appreciate that in a brush. There are two layer brushes in this line, the medium and the small. These brushes were clearly designed to allow the painter the ability to paint small objects and lines, and highlights on a miniature of this size. You could also use them easily for smaller miniatures. You have a significant amount of control with these two brushes. The layer medium is not designed for larger, flat surface areas. I gave it a go on this shield, but uh, it will leave paint streaks and won't be as clean as you would like. Uh, so this, I wouldn't suggest using it at all for flat surface areas, unless you're using a fluid paint and you are able to control the flow of that paint pretty well. Uh, like this contrast paint mixture I used for his hair, the brush allows you to cover the area relatively quickly and also with great precision, so there will be little to no cleanup after you're done. It does have the capacity to do small details as well, like this fellow's bushy eyebrows and his mustache. But I chose not to try out any eyes with this brush because I could tell that it would simply not do the job uh, as well as I would like. Its range does not include insane detail. Um, but for highlighting and the larger of the small details, it works admirably. The layer small, on the other hand, gives you much more control when you get into those nitty gritty details. Uh, it can be wielded for tiny details like eyes and pupils and small lines or reptilian eyes in this case. I didn't find it difficult to use at all. Uh, in fact, I could do whatever size detail that I wanted. Though I do suggest that if you're using thicker paint than liquid, for details of this size, you add a tiny touch of retarder medium so the paint isn't drying on the brush as you are using it. Much less so a problem when you're using more fluid paints, which is why with details of this size, fluid paints or liquid paints are my preference. The glaze brush of this line is one I found to be oddly named for its strengths. As a glaze brush, I would have expected it to be able to hold a lot of paint for its size with its fairly fine bristles so you could, you know, glaze with it. But that does not seem to be the case. Over surface areas larger than the diameter of a couple of millimeters, I would not use it. However, it works great as an alternate small layer brush. In fact, its upper tip dexterity makes it quite suitable for fine lines and scripts and logos that you need to paint manually. It is definitely one that you want to use some retarder medium with if you are using any paint with a viscosity thicker than milk, so the paint won't dry out in your brush as you are agonizingly bringing it close to your miniature but its point does stay fine and sharp during the process. I would use this for eyes and very fine dot details and even fine highlights. I, it is not a glaze brush in my mind, but it has its purpose. There are three different sizes of dry brushes in this line of paint brushes, and I found them all comparable to each other. You simply choose the size for the project and go with that one. Their quality is the same across the board, and they turned out better than I had expected. I have not been a fan of Games Workshop's previous dry brushes, so I came into this thinking that these three would be much the same, but I found that not to be the case. 
their bristles are super fine. And this has made the dry brushing experience very simple. One of the hardest obstacles to dry brushing well is not leaving brush lines or paint streaks behind as you're painting because of these guys fine bristles all three of these brushes make that problem easy to avoid any new painter should find at least once you have fully accepted the number one rule of dry brushing less is more that you will be able to pick up on the dry brushing method quite easily using these brushes I do already have dry brushes that I am quite satisfied with, but I always want at least three, preferably six, maybe eight, maybe ten for dry brushes during one dry brushing project so I do not have to wash out the brushes between colors, thereby ruining them for dry brushing purposes until the brush has dried again. So having far too many dry brushes, that's the way I want to be. All right, you're still with me. So out of all of these various brushes, what are my top three favorite brushes? Well, first one is the base medium. I do find that very useful um, for small flat surfaces. I've loved it uh, actually over the course of the past month when I've been painting surface areas about the size of my fingernail. Um, I've been using this brush exclusively. It is perfect for shoulder pads and armor and contrast paint methods. I'm very happy with this brush. I'll be using it for small details that you want to get um, done quickly. Once you get into smaller details that you want to get done quickly though, I am going to go with the small layer brush, not the medium layer brush. Uh, that one was all right. But the small layer brush is small enough that you can get to the nitty gritty details without having to switch brushes. So I like the small layer brush. These two brushes, the base medium and the layer small, I would suggest um, for anyone who has, doesn't have their own collection of brushes, these would be great for character size models like the majority of the ones that you saw me painting in the video, like the sister that I was painting in the video. I would totally go ahead and use that. My last one that is my, in my top three is actually this shade medium. I absolutely like it for shades. Um, that's about it. Shades and contrast paints. That's what I'd use it for. If I needed to be more precise, I would use the base medium, but if I was going to paint up a model and could only take three of these brushes for any model that is of the character size, like the sister that I painted or the little guy with red pants that I painted, these three guys, the shade medium, the base medium, allow me to paint an entire miniature up happily, speedily, without any problems. That's why they're my favorite. If I was going to go up for a larger sized miniature, uh, like perhaps the a snake that I was using though, um, I did find the shade large very nice for that size miniature. Uh, I'm going to keep it for that size miniature when I'm using, uh, when I'm painting that size miniature, basing over in one color. This I actually prefer it to the extra large base brush. Uh, the extra large base brush which would be okay for using with tanks but i just i like this one more you have more control it comes to a thinner point i prefer this one for larger miniatures i will be using that one um and if i was going to be painting larger sized miniatures i would go ahead now with this one and stick to my three favorites that's all i wanted to say on that i hope it was useful to you give me a like and subscribe hit that bell notification if it was I regularly come out with lines of paintbrushes and paints as long as I can get my hands on them, so keep checking back for that. If there was a material that you would like to uh, learn more about in the miniature hobby world, do let me know in the comments below. I will certainly put it on my list of things to try out. Thanks for watching. Bye! Thank you to the patrons that support this channel. You are what keeps me growing in more ways than one. I appreciate you.